recording and this is Friday afternoon, happy hour, East Coast time and it's Margaritas with Margarita. We are thrilled to be here with our favorite CFP, Margarita Chen, who is focused on helping women flex their financial muscles in 15 minutes or less at happy hour, East Coast time. Tonight, she's going to give us tips on what to do and what to be aware of when we're looking for that perfect side hustle to supplement our income. There's tons of good things and there's tons of things to just be on the lookout for. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of Rita's show on the Incandescent Radio and TV Network. Thrilled to be here. Pour a glass of club soda into this margarita glass from our dear friend Lisa Simon out back in DC and get the show started. So Rita, you were quoted in a CNBC article on February 18th by Jilly Malensky that explained that 70% of Americans want a side hustle. So tell us, where do we start? So yes, a lot of people do want the side hustle because it just gives you a little bit of wiggle room. Perhaps you can use that money to pay off debt, build up your emergency funds, or just have money for something else that you're working towards. And that makes sense because, you know, research shows that one quarter of people surveyed said they're more likely to make a career change to a new field. 27% said they're more likely to start their own businesses this year. And that was 2006 adults, according to the National Association of Professional Financial Advisors. Nearly three quarters of Americans reported that they're going to pick up this side hustle so that they can become more financially stable. So we have a few questions for you, and then you're going to give us five tips so that we can really be on the ball here. So what are some of the most considered additional income sources? So a lot of times when people think side hustle, and I didn't mention this in that article, is they think Uber or Lyft, but there's so much more than that. I just think that Uber and Lyft uh, kind of put that at the forefront. So some side hustles could be... Um, copy editing, freelance writing, um, personal training. I am not even being silly. My friend is a Zumba instructor and he was doing Zumba by Zoom. Right? So <laughs> yoga too. I mean, you can do almost anything as a side hustle, right? But there's one thing that you'd say that we must keep in mind. So absolutely. The thing that I tell people to be mindful of is no co-mingling, right? So this is a wholesome way to explain what I'm talking about. I love matcha and I love chai. I don't like them mixed together. So what does that have to do with anything? You want to make sure that you create a separate, you know, bank account. It could be online savings for the income from your side hustle because you don't want to commingle and you want to make sure that you're setting aside money for taxes. Right, absolutely. So as a freelancer for decades and decades, my, my ex-husband is also a freelance artist. I was a freelance writer. And you really know how to be prepared for this because you have to pay taxes quarterly. You have to account for all of your spending. So this is really essential. So you say in, in these top five things, start saving. That's the first thing. Absolutely. I tell people start saving. And you know what? Um, we are live here. And if you're not comfortable, you don't necessarily have to open another checking account and call it a business checking because it's important to be mindful of fees. But it is so important that you have a separate account so that you can track your spending. The other thing I would suggest um, is make sure that you have a separate credit card because some credit cards have really good reporting and it makes your life so much easier. I have full faith and confidence that your side hustle is going to be profitable. So I want to make sure that we're prepared. Right. Which brings you to the, us to the second point, which is begin budgeting. Tell us a little bit about that. So sure. So um, begin budgeting. The, what, the reason why it's so important to begin budgeting is with having a side hustle. And perhaps if it's your intention to go from your to make your side hustle your full time gig, you want to make sure that you understand um, how much you're making from each project and, it, and budgeting. Maybe if people don't like that B word, we'll say um, managing your cash flow. Right. Uh, how much did you need to spend to make that money? That makes perfect sense. So tell us, what are some of the barriers you think that limit people in this area? 
to budgeting or to staying organized? Yeah, I think all of it, you know, like what gets people in trouble when they go and, you know, they're doing their full time job, but they're doing this on the side. So what can they do to be, make sure that they're not going to make any mistakes? So I would say the first thing to do is just make sure this is how I see people get tripped up is not having a separate bank account, right? and not being able to keep track of what their business expenses are. I would say those are the two things where people um, can really get tripped up. So if you incurred expenses for your business, that's not unusual. It, it takes money. You need to spend money to make the money. But I think this is an area where people, you know, they're so busy with their day jobs. Perhaps they also have, you know, personal responsibilities. And before you know it, their side hustle has become quite profitable. And I will share a real life story with you. So I had a client uh, who had a full time job. And when his uh, girls went off to college, he had a client that really liked his work and asked him to do a freelance project. Well, what happened is he ended up owing money in taxes. But there's a uh, but we were able to um, help him. And no, we did not avoid paying, paying taxes. He actually set up a SEP IRA. And by putting money in the SEP IRA, he was able to uh, reduce what he owed in taxes. So I would say to answer your question, what trips people up is them not taking the, the extra time when the business is nascent to put these systems in place. Right. And sometimes you don't know that you're going to make money. So you figure, well, I'll just collect a little bit here and there. But then you realize that there's a price to be paid as your client you know, is an example of. You exactly. also talk about increasing spending awareness. What, 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 do you, what do you mean there? So what I mean by spending awareness, you know, we're all guilty of this. Um, we're at home, right? We're working from home. We have smartphones. So spending awareness is, you know, it is so easy to spend money on your phone, right? And, you know, retail therapy is real. Just to make sure that, you know, you are thinking to yourself, is this something that I need to have or is it nice to have? So I'm by no means being Scrooge here, you know, resist the temptation. Um, it's okay to have those apps on your phone, but don't store your credit card because that's also another um by not storing your credit card, you do make it a little bit inconvenient for yourself, but you're also making it inconvenient for thieves and hackers. Yeah, absolutely. So that kind of bridges the gap from the side hustle into just being conscious and having financial willpower and flex that financial muscle like you're talking about on this weekly show and also in your upcoming book, Diary of a CFP Pro, which is really teaching women what they need to do to master their money. So talk a little bit about the fifth tip, which is seeking financial planning assistance and why that's so important. Sure. Uh, of course, I'm a financial planner and I'm going to say, you know, it's OK to ask for help, whether you need help from a financial planner or a tax advisor. Um, it's okay to ask for help. That is actually not a sign of weakness. I think people are conditioned to think, oh, well, if I don't know something, I'm, I'm dumb, I should know this. No, you are good at what you do and don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, some examples would be like, you know, how much should I be setting aside in taxes? Um, what's the bis best business structure? Uh, particularly if your business has grown, maybe what you did then it's not bad, but it was right for you then, but that might not be right for you now. So that's what I mean. I think it's important to um, make sure that you are always um, evolving and getting the help you need as your business and your situation evolves. I, I, I could speak from a personal experience. I just restructured the way that Incandescent, which I founded in 2008, is working. And there's a whole bunch of new processes that I've put in place with the help of my financial planner um, and also an accountant and an attorney. So I think that as you do this side hustle and maybe it becomes your main hustle, that you really need to be aware and reach out to look for help from the professionals. Absolutely. And I always emphasize just because you did something then does not mean you should do that now. And if you didn't do that now, it doesn't mean it doesn't make sense for you today. Um, it's always good to just review your situation. And even if no change is warranted, that gives you peace of mind to keep doing what you're doing and then grow your side hustle. I love it. It's perfect. That is a wonderful appetizer to start off our 
cocktails from club soda to whatever may be in your glass and have a wonderful weekend. So thank you, Rita Cheng. Check out her website, margaritacheng.com. Also at ritachengcfp.com. We make it easy for you to get to her. All of these tips are on the homepage of her website, as is as will be this podcast and video. So we're so thrilled to bring tips to women about how to gain financial security and just more confidence. So thank you, Rita. It's wonderful to see you. And we will see you again next Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern for Margaritas with Margarita. We'll see you guys all soon. Mm -hmm.